joining us today, this evening or this afternoon, depending on what time it is where you are. Um, and, and a special welcome to our speaker today, Vitor Hikta. Um, for any of you joining us for the first time today, this is the Latin American Anthropology Seminar. Uh, it's a seminar aimed at early career anthropologists uh, around the world working on themes in Latin America. And it's hosted by the Institute of Latin American Studies at the School of Advanced Studies, which is based at the University of London. Um, we are three conveners for the seminar. Um, myself, Jesse Sclare, I'm based at Cambridge. Um, I know Montoya, who's here with us, uh, who's based at ILAS, uh, and also Natalia Buitron, who is based at Oxford and sadly couldn't be with us today. Um, the seminar runs fortnightly, uh, every Thursday at 5 p.m. Uh, UK time. And the full program is available on the ILAS website, so please do have a look and, and we hope join us again at future sessions. Um, so I'm delighted to introduce our speaker today, Vitor Hikta. Vitor is a postdoctoral researcher in anthropology at the uh, Universidade Federal do Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil. Um, Vitor's talk today is entitled, There's No Use for an Empty Database, Technopolitics of Brazil's Forensic DNA Data Database and Its Promises. Um, okay, so uh, Vitor, I'll pass over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sclair. Uh, good afternoon for uh, who's uh, in Americas uh, and good evening for those in Europe. It's a great pleasure to be here with you today uh, to share some, some uh, aspects of my research that, I've been, that uh, I conducted during my PhD period at uh, Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul in Porto Alegre. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy to, to be able to follow this uh, incredible seminar, uh, seminar. And I'd like to thank you very much, Professor uh, Sclair, Professor uh, Butron, and Professor Montoya for the, the opportunity. And uh, I'd just like to, uh, I made a, a, a brief uh, paper to read, to, to stay on, on, to try to stay on time. To, uh, no worry, no. <laughs> Okay, too quickly, please uh, let me know because I know that the pronunciation uh, will get worse, even worse, if I start to to rush the reading. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know, but we can hear you fine now, so please go ahead. Okay, so Brazilian forensic experts, or as we call here the peritos, have been engaged in introducing forensic genetics since mid-1990s. The introduction process, however, oh, sorry. I have to share my, my screen, of course. I'm very sorry. Everybody seeing the presentation on the presentation yeah. mode? Okay, yeah, thank you. can see that fine, yeah. Okay, so uh, for Brazilian forensic uh, genetics are engaged in introducing uh, the, the, the technologies of forensic uh, genetics since the mid 1990s. This introduction process, however, re rely mostly on forensic experts' individual efforts scattered around the country's forensic biochemistry uh, laboratories. Forensic expertise and technologies haven't been part of a national project and security policies until late 1990s in Brazil and early 2000s. According to several Brazilian public security experts, such as Michel Missi uh, and Luiz Eduardo Soares, uh, Brazil has never experienced a period of continued and integrated national policy for public security through the 20th century. It has experienced, uh, experienced what Luiz Eduardo Soares calls a pendular movement on its public security policy, alternating between more repressive policies towards marginalized uh, populations and after the uh, redemocratization of uh, 1985, policies of valorization of human rights and the constitution of 1988. It was only in the early 2000s that the new National uh, Public Security Office, Office uh, Secretaria Nacional de Segurança Pública, or SENASP, uh, as we uh, usually refer to, created in 1997, 
began to engage in a series of national uh, plans for public security that sought to change, uh, change the orientation from a national security doctrine that ca characterized most Latin American security policies uh, uh, to citizen-oriented policies based on the language of human rights. So uh, in 2005, uh, Brazilian forensic geneticists and a few university geneticists uh, uh, from universities uh, such as uh, uh, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro and Federal University of the state of Pará in the northern uh, part of Brazil gathered around a common effort to introduce the DNA databases in Brazil. A previous research and friendship relation established by one of these professors got the Brazilian forensic experts in direct contact with Bruce Boudot the head of FBI genetics division for a long time. Four years later, so we are in 2009, Brazilian federal police established a collaboration agreement with the FBI that gave access to FBI's combined DNA index system, or simply CODIS, uh, as is uh, more frequently known. Uh, Brazilian forensic expert traveled to the United States for training at FBI facilities and became responsible for training their colleagues around the country. The arrival of DNA database also demanded a new infrastructure for, for the arriving technology, including new and better equipped laboratories. According to a 2012 uh, CENASP report, only six states out of 27 had forensic genetics laboratories working by 2011, the year that the DNA database bill was submitted to Congress. Other 15 states were able to conduct DNA uh, exams but only seven had a system of register uh, the chain of custody, the administrative register of samples handling that is so crucial to evidence uh, credibility. So in 2012, a federal law regulating the use of this technology was approved after a year and a half in the Senate, a fast legislative process for Brazilian standards. The database network that composed the national database became the largest one in a single country outside the United States and promised to address Brazil's urgent and dramatic public security issues through the sampling and storage of convicted individuals and crime scene genetic samples. Genetic profiles, sorry. According to the Instituto de Pesquisas Econômicas Aplicadas, IPEA, or Applied Economic Research Institute, in 2017, Brazil registered 65, over 65,000 homicides. And also another report for, from IPEAS in 2019, uh, a report called Atlas da Violência or Atlas of Violence, says that it's not possible to measure the elucidation of crime rate uh, because several states don't keep these records. IP, uh, uh, IPEAS or report from uh, IPEAS estimates that only around 10 to 20 in the optimistic uh, estimative of homicides are solved in Brazil. And they have another uh, report that say among those 10% uh, or a little bit more, those that are uh, solved, that are indictments and conviction usually are those uh, that are uh, involved fl fragment, uh, flagrant, flagrant, you now uh, uh, arresting the act, or I, I don't know exactly the word to how to, use the, to translate this to English, but those that uh, you have a, 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 the aggressor in the, the scene, or you, you don't need to involve uh, investigations. The combination of genetic expertise, precision of biotechnology, and the agility of databases were made the holder of an appealing image of the future. A future where public security agents, such as uh, forensic scientists, and not only the police officers, often seen as violent, corrupt, and with less formation in terms of uh, school years, uh, will become more efficient in presenting the prosecutors and judges with suspect based on genetic profile matches. As Han Appel, Nikhil Anand, and Akil Gupta in a recent book argue, infrastructures frequently are materialization of hope and promises. Sorry, let me hear. Uh, I quote them. Um, Whether they are being built or crumbling, infrastructure, infrastructure simultaneously index the achievements and limits, expectations and failures of modernity, end quote. Because of this double index of achievement and failures, the infrastructure, infrastructure of forensic genetics in Brazil needed careful strategies to have its successful introduction guaranteed. It couldn't rely on only socio-technical imaginary over science 
technology, genetics, and databases. One of these strategies become clear through the voice of the representative of the lobby firm hired by biotechnology company Thermo Fisher to represent their interests in expansion of forensic DNA, DNA database around the world. Quote for the, the lobbyist, pass the law and the money will come. Brazil needed to prepare its DNA database law quickly if it wanted to benefit from the promises of, that the DNA database carried. The money, did, the money did flow after the Congress agility to pass this law. Today, the country has 21 laboratories connected to a national network and the third largest and growing carceral population in the world, over uh, 860,000 uh, uh, persons uh, arrested or inmates, uh, to be genetic profile, considering projected expansions to the criteria of mandatory sampling. Uh, the everyday practical conditions to do so however, have proved to be way more complicated than forensic experts and legislators expected and supposed. And as a geneticist from an important university in the southern uh, part of Brazil, involved in introducing the database and training forensic gen geneticists said to me in a visit to her laboratory in 2012, there's no, a quote, there's no use for an empty database, Victor. We need to enforce the mandatory sampling of DNA. Otherwise, no one will want to no one will want to give a sample." End quote. When the DNA database technology became available in Brazil, the legal frame that would allow its use in criminal investigation was still to be established. This opened the usual regulation questions. Who should be in the database? Uh, how it should uh, be filed? How long uh, should profiles be stored? Should the convicted uh, be required to give a sample or should she he consent? The 2012 DNA database law authorized the mandatory uh, DNA sampling and the storage of genetic profiles. Uh, and uh, the mandatory uh, sampling was uh, established for those individuals convicted for a crime hediondo, uh, that would be a, akin to a felony in the United States. I don't know exactly uh, how it's in, the, in Britain and the United, uh, United Kingdom, uh, if there's any, uh, I imagine that it was like the, the more severe uh, uh, conviction for uh, cr crimes. And also a mandatory sample for crimes of a, open quotes, violent in nature against a person, close quote. A crime typification that doesn't exist in the, in Brazil legislation. Uh, far from closing the discussion on how Brazilians should use forensic data, DNA database, the law intensified debates. Several criminal scholars and some judges stated that the law was approved without the legitimization criticism of legal experts and scholars. As Dr. Uh, Thaisa Schiocchi, a legal scholar that coordinated a research report for, uh, for the Ministry of Justice about uh, the uh, uh, DNA databases law around the world, said in an interview in 2014, the scarcity of public debates during legislative process isn't rare in Brazil. However, the restricted debate around, debates around forensic DNA database in Brazil was an effect of Peritos, our forensic expert, protagonism during the DNA database law elaboration process. Uh, open quote for Dr. Schiocchi. Few people knew about the existence of the law. Few juristas or legal scholars participated. Very few juristas participated in this process. The law didn't have a democratic dis discussion with society. For sure, the whole society couldn't participate. How could we have done? Expanding the debate, bringing other experts, listening to other point of views. Our DNA law have only five articles, measly five articles. Maybe this whole process could have been better." Uh, end quote. Dr. Dr. Schiocchi's account is not far from the perception of peritos themselves. Gustavo, a uh, federal police forensic scientist, that, as we call him uh, as Gustavo here, uh, with more than 15 years of experience in forensic genetics interviewing in Porto Alegre, said that, that other actors from the criminal justice system, such as police chiefs or delegados, uh, prosecutors, lawyers, public defenders, and judges had minimal participation during the introduction of forensic DNA database in Brazil. Open quote for Gustavo in 2014. All the initiative around the DNA database was taken, was taken exclusively by peritos. 
from building laboratories to structuring the database. The law itself was an initiative took by the Peritos. We went looking for legislators. We went looking for a senator and said to him, look, we are going to present a law like this and this. And he liked the idea. We approached some congressmen and took them to get to know the codes in the United States. It was an initiative taken by the Peritos. The participation of judges and prosecutor, prosecutors in the shaping of DNA law was no, it didn't exist. When they got in, they got in uh, now. When they, when, they, when they started to participate in the, in the database administration committee, end quote. Restricted debates on forensic DNA database law was pointed by critics as one of reason for the approval of, open quotes, a law full of unconstitutionalities, end quote. The main aspect of, uh, that drew criticism was the mandatory collection of genetic samples from those convicted for a crime, a uh, crime uh, violating the right to not self-incriminate. This point of view uh, uh, sustained and appeal challenged the constitutionality of the DNA database law uh, in, Brazilian, in Brazil's Supreme Court in 2016. In May 2016, the, court, the, court, the Supreme Court accepted the case as having constitutional relevance. And in May 2017, the Supreme Court held a public hearing on the matter. The hearing took place simultaneously science event in Brazil. Because of this, the hearing had the participation of prominent, prominent international and Brazilian forensic experts, such as the director of the forensic DNA database uh, from the United States and Germany, uh, alongside them, other Brazilian forensic experts, legal scholars, and Debbie Smith, an activist from a support group to victims of sexual violence, addressed the court as amicus curiae, like a friend of the court as uh, experts' uh, testimonies. In a very brief summary, the FBI told uh, the court that in the United States all the decisions favored the DNA laws. The, laws. the German uh, expert highlighted the importance of British database size and how it would mean uh, efficiency. It's the famous 64% uh, or 63.2% or of chance of every new uh, profile added to the database to give a match, match in, to result in a match. Uh, and this like be a, a, a key number as a, a image of efficiency of the database. But a lot of stu studies show that it doesn't have, uh, it, it doesn't correlate to efficacy or or efficiency. And the Brazilian expert reviewed the situations that the Brazilian Supreme Court considers as violation to the right to not self-incriminate, arguing that the mandatory DNA sampling wouldn't go against the court, uh, what the court has decided before. The, the discussion around mandatory sampling and the constitutionality of uh, DNA database law in Brazil uh, got an interesting turn when the public defense uh, representative situated the sampling where it will in fact happen inside prisons. After the talk given by a forensic physician representing the, the Associação Brasileira de Medicina Legal e Pericias Médicas or Brazilian Legal Medicine Association, a group of forensic experts that sometimes dispute with forensic genetics the authority of sampling, uh, genetic, uh, sampling genetic profiles, sorry. The defense lawyer said to the medical doctor that the mandatory sampling inside prisons could, uh, could end up uh, resulting in a use of force or restraining tactics in order to sample uh, DNA. The lawyer asked how the forensic physician expect this practice would uh, be conducted inside prison given his large experience in the field. The physician answered by uh, citing an intriguing dilemma that his professional category faced when discussing the matter of uh, uh, Forensic DNA database, open quote, for the, uh, Dr. Joseph Freire. As legal physicians, we have a profoundly serious problem. The resolution uh, from 1931, no, the resolution 1931 of the Federal Medicine Council, Council, Council sorry, forbids us to do that, collect DNA without consent. It doesn't mean that the law forbids me to do that, but the council does. We are, before anything, medical doctors. I can't do this kind of procedure uh, inside a prison, end quote. For the physician, one solution to this dilemma could be the transfer for all persons to, uh, to be genetically profiled 
to an appropriate uh, examination facility. However, he recognized that the safety and public security risks involved could make it impossible. He went further and considered that even if this could be accomplished, what will happen if someone refused to open his mouth? Even with a judge order, open quote, I'm sorry. What am I, uh, uh, in, in this moment, Dr. Joseph Frenfrey uh, uh, asked himself, what am I to do to make someone open his mouth? I won't be able to do this. I can't force him to do anything. We need the consent. Oh, it's, it's down there, sorry. So uh, the public defender that instigated this conversation with uh, the physician uh, interrupted. He, the prisoner, will say no. The, the physician followed it. We won't do anything then. The database network guidelines does include a document to inform judges in inmate refusal to give a DNA sample. And the Brazilian forensics experts uh, reject resource to violence as a means as a mean to obtain a DNA sample. They strongly uh, reject the resource to violence. They agree with those concerned that the sampling of an inmate could be conducted by prison uh, agents, drastically reducing the credibility of the evidence since it's not collected by a scientist or a specialized uh, person. Besides the effects of the credibility of the evidence produced from such sample, it also evokes references to the military dictatorship and does erode in the credibility of forensics DNA da database even further or having this possibility to erode this, its credibility and uh, legitim legitimacy, legitimacy, sorry. During Brazilian dictatorship, forensic expertise and evidence were used to hide homicides conducted by the military regime as much of, of you may know that uh, studies Brazil and other uh, military regimes in Latin America. Among them, the murder of the journalist Vladimir Herzog while he was tortured on October 25th, 1975. After the forgery of his murder was exposed, six days after his murder, of uh, Herzog's murder, an ecumenic act was held in Sao Paulo with leaders from Catholic, Jewish, and evangelical beliefs gathering thousands of people, even under military surveillance and siege. It was, an iconic, it was an iconic moment towards the long process of rebuilding democracy in Brazil. Alongside the dictatorship, cases such as the Carangiru's prison massacre, when uh, 111 surrendered inmates were executed by military police during a rebellion in 1991, many massacres or chacinas and corruption cases involving police officers and high numbers of death cause, deaths caused by police action make the association of prisons, police forces, and bodily samples, samples uh, with possible implications for criminal prosecution very sensitive. The dilemma pointed out by the legal physician, therefore, remains even if the Supreme Court rules the mandatory DNA sampling uh, is constitutional. As the public defense attorney, uh, sorry, expressed in the hearing in the Supreme Court, attentive and informed defense lawyers won't stop counseling their clients to refuse sampling. In the questions, uh, sampling and the questions about how far to go to constrain someone and obtain uh, genetic profiles are still far from resolved. Now, uh, a, a, a little jump on time to uh, February 2021. So as of February, February 2021, uh, the Supreme Court hasn't manifested a decision. Uh, however, the now former Minister of Justice, uh, Sergio Moro, uh, made proposals to expand the criteria for mandatory sam sample in his uh, anti-crime law. Yes, that's, that's the, the name of the bill, anti-crime. This bill caused heated uh, discussions in 2019 because it included an illicit exclusion to police officers that killed during duty if it was proven that the action was committed under, quote, fear, surprise, or violent emotion, end quote. Concerning DNA databases, the bill proposed to expand mandatory sampling to individuals convicted of a crime doloso, which means any crime committed with intent. The bill, the bill also, also established that convicted individual already incarcerated will be submitted to a mandatory sampling, something that wasn't in, uh, inscribed in any law, leaving the responsibility to organize uh, the sampling, 
the sample the sampling efforts to forensic genetic geneticists the laser the the last aspect concerning the dna database uh, was that it uh, including this uh, sergio's motor bill was that it made the refusal to give the dna sample a severe fault that has the uh, the effect to cancel sentence progressions and other benefits acquired by inmates during the execution of their sentences. The anti-crime law was proposed by notorious judge responsible to conduct the case that unsettled the country from 2014 onwards, the Operation Car Wash, Lava Jato, and led to the impeachment of, the, of former President Rousseff in uh, Dilma Rousseff in 2016. As an icon of a popul populist punitivism in which a new law promises to end crime through increasingly severe punishment, this bill was proposed in a context characterized by increasing authoritarian in inclinations. Uh, of course, this uh, sensitive matter, new research are, are being conducted uh, relating to religion, to gender, but uh, I'm referring here the, the research from Renato Sergio Lima and the, his colleagues from the uh, Forum Brasileiro de Segurança Pública, Public Security uh, Forum, Brazilian Forum, that is a very uh, respected institution in, here in Brazil. As Renato Sergio Lima and colleagues have argued in a recent paper, the expansion of authoritarian sensibilities among Brazilian population is intimately related to the country's shortcoming in dealing with violent crime and the generalized fear of violence. They observe uh, that authoritarian sensibilities and inclinations are more frequent, in, frequent sorry, in lower income groups, and the authors relate this to the precarity of social programs dependency, constant risk, risk of losing social benefits, and higher su susceptibility uh, to violence. The anti-crime law, therefore, was received with support from different segments in Brazilian society, and the public debates were concerned uh, and uh, concentrated on the polemic around illicit exclusion for police violence. The large expansion to DNA database inclusion criteria towards less offensive crimes went under the radar of public debates once again. Uh, this change in the DNA database law expanded massively the, pro the population to be genetic profile. In 2017, the, in the uh, before mentioned uh, Supreme Court hearing, uh, the head of the that DNA database, Brazilian DNA database, estimated that there were around 70,000 individuals convicted uh, for uh, crimes hediondos, uh, felony, uh, to be sampled. This estimative has already proven overly cautious. These are the, the most uh, recent uh, data on uh, uh, the amount of uh, DNA uh, profiles uh, stored. Uh, this estimate has already proven overly cautious since the last uh, um, um, database network report uh, with data until May 2020 shows a total of uh, 82,000, uh, more than 82,000 genetic profiles stored, with uh, 64, more than 64 being from convicted uh, individuals and only and, uh, a few uh, uh, and only uh, over 12,000 uh, genetic profiles from crime scenes. Uh, as scholars such as Felipe Santos, uh, Helena Machado, and their team from University of Minho, and Caroli McCartney and Aaron Amanqua uh, in North, North Trumbia University, I hope I, I haven't, I, I'm pretty sure I, I'm not saying that right, uh, have demonstrated the focus on crime scene samples uh, can make smaller database perform just as well as those with large percentage of the population and less crime scenes profile story. The option for a convicted individual's model based on those, uh, the, the mandatory sample, those already convicted, uh, therefore cannot be sustained on efficiency arguments. So in order to better understand Brazil's choice for this model, we have to go beyond the effectiveness of the database and bio, biotechnology interest, industry interest in selling projects and equipment to profile the third largest and growing carceral population in the world. 
If we include forensic experts' point of view on police organization and investigation practices, for example, we learn that the police infrastructure already in place set important constraints to, to genetic profile circulations. Brazilian forensic experts interviewing our research frequently insisted to highlight that most violent crimes are committed in the streets of cities, poor neighborhoods. These are crime scenes that police frequently arrive after victims' family or curious, pe curious people, making it harder to guarantee the isolated crime scene that forensics uh, relies on. Besides the challenges of a large urban uh, centers, forensic experts also point to the distances they have to travel to get to the countryside uh, crime scenes. Since the vast majority of forensic uh, services, and especially the forensic genetic services, are located in state's capitals. For Walter, uh, for example, a forensic expert in Rio Grande do Sul State uh, Forensic Institute, it's in this situation that the crime scene preservation is even more difficult. Open quote for Walter. Oh, sorry. This graphs so are, if we have time in the questions, I would like to address that. But uh, open quote for Walter. This culture of crime scene, pre uh, this culture of crime scene preservation is something that uh, the Forensic Institute has been promoting for the last 12 years. It established the following rule. We only go to crime scenes that, we were, that were isolated and guarded. If you arrive at a scene and it hasn't been isolated, it's a, it's a scene compromised. You don't have much to do there. Of course, in exceptional cases, you end up uh, answering the call because of political pressure or something like that. But in general, we don't answer for crime scenes that haven't been isolated and guarded, end quote. As already, have, uh, as already has been established uh, by science and technology studies, our counts, crime scene isolation and preservation are not only a matter of maintaining crime scene con conditions for a larger collection of sample and evidence. It is the first of a series of procedures that takes part in the DNA evidence economy of credibility and in the evidence enactment itself. As Ahmad M. Sharak argues, open quote, DNA is more than just biological material. The D oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, the DNA is inextricably bound up with all those procedures and techniques necessary to be able to use it as a means of identification. Without those procedures and techniques, you don't have, you, you do not have DNA to start with. Maybe you have a t-shirt with blood on it, but no more than that. And she continued elaborating on uh, the enactment of an evidence. The route of the biological material from a crime scene to, to lab and out again comp comprises therefore more than the transmission of material and information. Along that route, a biological trace is made into DNA evidence. A police officer becomes a forensic slave and a genetic researcher becomes an expert witness. The various actors together make DNA what it is, forensic evidence, but also the other way around. The DNA that circulates between them makes them what they are. All are more than the title of their function would suggest." Uh, end quote for uh, M. Sharak. Uh, what is important to retain here is that circulations are therefore performative. And Brazilian forensic experts are very aware and concerned about the challenges presented to the circulation of crime scene samples until it is made into credible forensic evidence. However, it is, it is not only the, the difficulties of a large country that concerns many of them, but also the added challenge of two police forces model, one police force, one military police force, and another civil police uh, force. This model adds significant complexities to the practices required to make crime scene genetic profiles circulate with credibility through the infrastructure of forensic genetics. For example, the military police uh, is the first public security actor to arrive at a crime scene, but cannot act upon it, but without, uh, and cannot act uh, upon it because it doesn't have any prerogative to conduct criminal investigation as a consequence of their role in the military dictatorship. The civil police on the other side irrespons is responsible for investigations and judicial work. However, as a bureaucratic institution, it frequently reacts late in relation to criminal acts 
which tends to generate lower quality information, leading to greater difficulties to investigation. So I'm finishing now. I don't know. I, I forgot to mark my time. I, I, we are okay. Yes, Sorry. perfect. Thank you. Uh, you. Can have a few more minutes if you like. Yeah, I finish. just page to 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 end. So as my concluding concluding thoughts thought, thoughts. I would like to say that the Brazilian forensic DNA database model of sampling known individual, individuals emerges as a combination of international collaboration with the FBI, biotechnology companies interested in sampling a large prison population, promises of crime deterrence from the use of genetic science technology, and particularities of Brazilian forensics and police infrastructure that presented known challenges to forensic experts in dealing with DNA evidence in crime scenes. This model, however, began to face unexpected difficulties once it was time to face the task to fill the database with individual samples collected inside prison as the head, as the head of the uh, Brazilian database made clear in the Supreme uh, Court public hearing. And uh, the geneticist told me uh, uh, even in 2012 uh, in her laboratory in the Southern Brazil University. While the challenges to be uh, to be faced around crime scenes and valid DNA evidence were expected by Brazilian forensics, legal and police experts. The mandatory sam DNA sampling of known and convicted uh, subjects was very quickly framed in a way that assumed that the prisoners were easily available to be sampled. It was supposed to be much easier than investi investing on a model focused on crime scene samples which was never seen as viable option for those experts we talked to. The forensic DNA database technology cannot be considered isolated from the medi mediations and associations that make, make it, it arrive in, in Brazil and to be stabilized in its legal and infrastructure, infrastructural setting in a particular way, what I'm, I was describing the much for the most part of this uh, paper. As Antina von Schnitzler argue, when technologies depart from their pr production context to travel to another, uh, to, to another, they become even more unstable, opening, uh, open it, uh, they opening is spaces for disputes and negotiations on new uses, regulations, and meanings that take part in the process of its stabilization. However, as Madeleine Akrich or Madeleine Akrich uh, reminds us. Technologies also carry scripts on the distribution of agencies, relations, and subjects they interact with. These scripts are the work made by the technology designers to inscribe a particular vision or concept or conception of the world that, open quote for Madeleine Akrich, define actors with specific tastes, competences, motives, aspirations, political prejudices, and the rest. And they assume that morality, te technology, science, and econ economy will evolve in particular, particularly, particular ways. Sorry, end quote. Technologies and infrastructure, therefore, set frameworks that carry politics and moralities on their design itself. It's been long established. These ideas are particularly relevant to understand the difficulties that Brazilian forensic experts had in filling the database with genetic profiles sample from incarcerated individuals. When the forensic DNA database arrived in Brazil, accompanied, accompanied, accompanied uh, by the United States and United Kingdom model of sampling known individuals, the stakeholders responsible for its, in, its introduction, sorry, inscribed the only model supposed to be available to Brazil based on the availability of prisoners' bodies. The bodies of incarcerated subjects were presupposed to be at the disposal of forensic experts. Their bodies are contained and lives are managed by a state institution in an infrastructure that was deemed easily accessible to another state, to other state actors, such as forensic experts, through negotiation with uh, judges, like uh, the judges that uh, super makes the supervision on the execution of the sentences, and prison wardens. The Brazilian prison system, however, holds particularities and complexity way more difficult than no, that one can expect from a distance and that we cannot fully describe and address here. From the offices and laboratories, the prison can easily be framed as an infrastructure at state actors' disposal. But getting closer to Brazilian prisons, 
the circulation of forensic experts to the interior of this for the genetic uh, forensic infrastructures and laboratories are much more delicate. So my last uh, paragraph, if I may. As Karina Biondi ethnographic work uh, on organized crime in Brazilian uh, prison has shown, groups such as Primeiro Comando da Capital, PCC or uh, PCC, uh, manage everyday life of uh, Brazilian prisons and beyond, extending their territory of, of control far from prisons walls into the suburbs of large urban centers, such as Sao Paulo. This doesn't mean that inmates have total control over Brazilian prisons, but it means that although the number of genetic profiles started began to raise, to raise in 2019, uh, an effect or phenomenon that we cannot understand completely, we cannot just uh, attribute to the, uh, the presidency of Jair Bolsonaro, but it's something that we, we are trying to look in, into it. So we cannot, uh, um, but it, uh, so they don't control uh, all the, the prison. But it means that although the number of genetic profiles started began to raise in 2019, prison, prisoners still are a collective of subjects that can't be forgotten or presupposed irrelevant if Brazilian forensic geneticists want to circulate DNA through the forensic infrastructure in order to make to enact suspects or uh, uh, individuals to be com convicted by judges and prosecutors. Negotiations, including the inmates, might be necessary to be made to enable the circulation of their DNA, even if the mandatory sample is considered constitutional by Brazilian Supreme Court. Could the samples be, be traded for, uh, for sentence benefits instead of the, uh, of the denial be turned into severe faults that extend time in jail? This negotiation could involve a better understanding of the implications of DNA sampling for inmates themselves, since as uh, Claudia Fonseca and myself uh, described in a, in a previous uh, paper, it is not clear that uh, prisoners are being well informed about DNA sampling procedures and their consequences. Otherwise, violence and deceit may characterize the conduct of mandatory DNA uh, sampling inside Brazilian prisons, an alternative that will flood the courts with appeals and that has the potential to je jeopardize the project of establishing the largest forensic DNA database network outside the United States as a promise to halt the urgent problems around crime and policy investigations in Brazil. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope I, I didn't pass too much from the time. And here are the references. Well, that was great. Thank you so much, Vitor. That was really fascinating. So many... Um interesting aspects to this.